Bless, Master. Blessed is our God, <coughs> always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <coughs> Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou hast been magnified exceedingly. Confession and majesty hast thou put on, who covers thyself and lightest with a garment, who stretches out the heavens as it were a curtain, who supporteth his chambers in the waters, who appointed the clouds for his ascent, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire, who establisheth the earth in the sureness thereof, it shall not be turned back forever and ever. The abyss like a garment is his mantle, upon the mountains shall the water stand. At thy rebuke they will flee, at the voice of thy thunder shall they be afraid. The mountains rise up, and the plains sink down unto the place where thou hast established them. Thou hast appointed a bound that they shall not pass, neither return to cover the earth. He sendeth forth springs in the valleys, between the mountains where the waters run. They shall be given drink, they shall give drink to the beasts, to all the beasts of the field. The wild asses will wait to quench their thirst. Beside them will the, all the birds of the heavens lodge, from the midst of the rock will they give voice. He watereth the mountains from his chambers, the earth is, shall be satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and green herb for the service of men, to bring forth bread out of the earth, and wine maketh glad the heart of man, to make his face cheerful with oil, and bread strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the plain shall be satisfied, the cedars of Lebanon which thou hast planted. There where the sparrows make their nests, the house of the heron is chief among them. The high mountains are a refuge for the hearts, and so is the rock for the hares. He hath made the moon for seasons, the sun knoweth his going down. Thou appointest the darkness, and there was the night, wherein all the beasts of the forest will go abroad, young lions roaring after their prey and seeking their food from God. The sun arises, and they are gathered together, and they lay them down in their dens. Man shall go forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. How magnified are thy works, O Lord, and wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is filled with thy creation, so is this great and spacious sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, small living creatures with the great. There go the ships, and there is this Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. All things wait on thee to give them their food in due season. When thou givest it them, they will gather it. When thou openest thy hand, all things shall be filled with goodness. When thou turnest away thy face, they shall be troubled. Thou wilt take their spirit, and they shall cease, and unto their dust shall they return. Thou wilt send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let the glory of the Lord be unto the ages. The Lord will rejoice in his works. Who looketh on the earth and maketh it tremble, who toucheth the mountains and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord throughout my life, I will chant to my God for as long as I have my being. May my words be sweet unto him, I will rejoice in the Lord. O oh, that sinners would cease from the earth, and they that work iniquity, they should be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The sun knoweth is going down, thou appointest the darkness, and there was the night. How magnified are thy works, O Lord, and wisdom hast thou made them all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. O our God and our hope, glory to thee. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the good estate of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who with faith, reverence, and the fear of God entered therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Father, Metropolitan Joseph, for the venerable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Metropolitan Paul and Archbishop John, and for their quick release from captivity and safe return, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the President of the United States, for all civil authorities and for armed <coughs> forces everywhere, especially for Peter, Andrew, Benjamin, Ronnie, Thaddeus, Adam, Madison, Will, Cecil, and Joshua, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and for every city and land, and for the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For helpful seasons, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by sea, by land, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and for their salvation, for those under persecution for the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray <coughs> to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Most Lady of the Angels, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages <coughs> of ages. To thee, O Lord, Lord, are mine eyes, in thee have I 
put my trust, take not away my soul. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me, <coughs> and the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst I alone escape. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord. Did I make my supplication? I put up my supplication before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, and thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they secretly laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand, and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, no one cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger <coughs> than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The whole creation of Christ hath been transfigured by fear at beholding me suspended on the cross. The sun was darkened, the foundations of the earth were troubled, and everything suffered with the Creator of all. Wherefore, O Thou, who didst endure this willingly for us, O Lord, glory to Thee. For the righteous shall wait for me until thou recompense me. Why doth the law transgressing people of false worship meditate in falsehood? Why was he condemned to death who is the life of all? What great wonder that the creator of the world hath been delivered into the hands of the wicked. And the lover of mankind hath been elevated on a tree To deliver those who are bound in Hades who cry O long-suffering Father, glory <laughs> to thee Out of the depths have I cried to thee, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice Today the blameless virgin hath seen thee, O word Suspended on the cross and her heart was wounded with mourning from parental emotions. <clears throat> she sighed disconsolately from the depth of her soul. She pulled her hair and cheeks bitterly. She smote her breast, crying with copious tears. Woe is me, O oh my divine son! Woe is me, O light of the world! <clears throat> now hast thou disappeared before mine eyes, O Lamb of God. Then the incorporeal hosts were engulfed with trembling, crying, O incomprehensible Lord, glory to thee. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. <clears throat> Christ, God of all creation, and its maker, she who without seed gave thee birth, seed me suspended on a tree, cried bitterly, Where has the beauty of thy countenance gone, O oh, my son? I cannot endure the sight of thine unjust crucifixion. Arise soon, that I may behold thy Third day resurrection from the dead. If thou, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? For with thee there is forgiveness. Today the Lord of creation standeth before Pilate, and the Creator of all is delivered up to crucifixion. Offered as a lamb of his own will, he is fastened with nails pierced with a spear, and a sponge is brought near to him who reigned manna. The Redeemer of the world is 
smitten on his cheek, and the Redeemer of all <clears throat> is ridiculed by his own servants. What love the Master has shown to mankind, for he prayed his Father on behalf of his crucifier, saying, Forgive them the sin, for the transgressors of the law know not what they unjustly do. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the <coughs> Holy Spirit. Oh, how the assembly of the law transgressors condemned to death the King of creation, not being ashamed nor abashed by his blessings, of which he had assured them formally, formerly calling them to their remembrance, saying, My people, what have I done to thee? Have I not now showered Judaism with wonders? Have I not raised the dead by only a word? Have I not healed every sickness and every weakness? With what then hast thou rewarded me? And why forgettest thou me for healing? Thou hast inflicted wounds upon me. And for raising the dead thou dost cause me. The benevolent to die, die suspended on a tree as an evil doer. The giver of the law, as of a tra law transgressor, and the king of all is one, as one who is condemned. Wherefore, O long suffering Lord, glory to thee. Stand upright. <clears throat> oh, gladsome light of the holy glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, having come to the setting of 
the sun and beheld the light of evening. We praise the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God. At all times thou art worthy, he thou art worthy of grace in souls. As Son of God, giver of life, therefore the world glorifies Thee. Evening, Prokimenon. <laughs> They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. My God, my God, look upon me, why hast thou forsaken me? Wisdom. The reading is from the book of Exodus. Let us be attentive. <clears throat> Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his servant Joshua the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, thou sayest to me, Bring up this people, but thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, show me now thy ways, that I may know thee and find favor in thy sight. Consider, too, that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If thy presence will not go with me, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in thy sight, I and thy people? Is it not in thy going with us, so that we are distinct, I and thy people, from all other people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, I pray thee, show me thy glory. <clears throat> And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for a man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand upon the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Let us attend. Plead thou my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. They rewarded me evil for good. Wisdom. The reading is from the book of Job. Let us be attentive. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. <clears throat> and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapak. And, and in all the land there were no women so fair as Job's daughters. And their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. And after this, Job lived a hundred and forty years and saw his sons, and his sons' sons, four generations. And Job died, an old man full of days. Let us sit down. O Lord, our Lord, how admirable is thy name in all the earth. Thy magnificence is elevated above the heavens. Wisdom. <clears throat> the reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us be attentive. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the sons of men, so shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has not been told them they shall see, and that which they have not heard they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, 
a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our, our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in travail. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Let us attend. <clears throat> For came and on, they laid in me the lowest pit and dark in the dark places and in the shadow of death. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried by day and in the night before you. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will thwart. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and a folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. First, consider your call. Brethren, not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many of you were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast of the Lord. When I came to you, brethren, I did not come, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. Peace be to thee that readeth and to thy spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom attend, <clears throat> let us hear the holy gospel. Peace be to all and to, and to thy, thy spirit. spirit. The reading of the Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Let us be attentive. At that time, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. 
And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. When Judas's betrayer saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him who was valued, who was valued by the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who was called Christ? For Pilate knew that they had delivered Jesus up out of envy. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And Pilate said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then Pilate released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man was compelled to carry Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots, that what was spoken by the prophet might be fulfilled. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And when he indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. If he is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he desires him, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was a darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, 
And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried aloud with a loud voice, and gave up the spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split, the tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he had all, was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness, his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled, not a bone of him shall be broken. And again another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. There were also many women there looking on from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there was a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Jesus took the body, and Joseph took the body, and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, <coughs> sitting opposite the sepulchre. Glory to thy long suffering, Lord, glory to thee. Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken <coughs> and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness, we pray thee, hearken <coughs> and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Father, Metropolitan Joseph, and all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the, our brethren, the priests, hiro monks, deacons, hiro deacons, and monastics. And all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation, and pardon and forgiveness of sins for the servants of God, all Orthodox Christians of true worship who live and dwell in this community. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy church. And for all our fathers and brethren, the orthodox depart of this life before us, who here in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bear fruit into good works in this holy and all-venerable temple, for those who serve and those who sing, and for all the people here present. Who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. 
For thou art a merciful God and lovest mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Vow to save, O Lord, Lord, to keep, keep us this evening without sin. Blessed art thou, thou, O Lord, Lord God of our, our fathers, and praised and glorified is thy name forever. Amen. Amen. Let thy mercy be upon us, O Lord, even as we have set our hope on thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Master, make me to understand thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Holy One, enlighten me with thy statutes. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. O despise not the works of thy hands. To thee belongeth worship, to thee belongeth praise, to thee belongeth glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, all things good and profitable for our souls, and for peace in the world. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, for a Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the fearful judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages. Of ages. Amen. Peace be to all. And to thy spirit. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. To thee, O Lord. O Lord, our God, who didst bow the heavens and come down for the salvation of mankind, look upon thy servants and thine inheritance. For unto thee, the fearful judge, who yet lovest mankind, have thy servants bowed their heads and submissively inclined their necks, awaiting not help from men, but entreating thy mercy and looking confidently for thy salvation. Guard them at all times, both during this present evening and in the approaching night, from every foe, from all adverse powers of the devil, from vain thoughts and from evil imaginations. Blessed and glorified be the majesty of thy kingdom, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> The tombs were opened and the dead awoke. 
Then Adam cried to thee with joy and gratitude, Glory to thy condescension, O lover of mankind. For he hath established the world which shall not be moved, O Christ, who in thy divine nature art boundless and infinite, when thou wast enclosed in the grave by thine own will after the flesh, thou didst close the chambers of death and Hades, and didst demolish all its kingdoms. Then thou preparest the Sabbath for thy glory, thine illumination, and thy divine blessing. O it becometh thy house, O Lord, unto length of days, the angelic host of Christ, beholding those lawless ones, victimize thee as a criminal, and see not tombstone sealed by the hands of those who pierced thy side, were frightened at thine ineffable long suffering, but rejoicing at our salvation, they cried unto thee, Glory to thy condescension, O lover of mankind. <laughs>
of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. reviling and death for our salvation, Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all honorable apostles, of the holy glorious and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, 
of St. Barnabas, the patron and protector of this holy community, of the uh, holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, <clears throat> and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and love us back, God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. 